Okay, we're back out here with the Lee Enfield again. And really what I'm doing is I'm just repeating the test that I did last time. Uh, this is the expander ball versus mandrel test. And uh, I got 10 shots of both. You might notice I have some rounds that are kind of um, uh, separated. Can't think of a better word. Uh, it's, it's pretty cold out. Uh, it's not super cold, but it's 20 degrees and dropping. It is currently about uh, a little after 4 p.m. Anyway, so these are the uh, case neck runout numbers. Uh, and we can see the expander ball actually did a whole lot worse and had a much, uh, much greater spread. Whereas the mandrel was actually a lot more consistent. Although both are actually pretty bad. I don't know why they're so much worse than last time. Uh, they just are. I can tell you though that when I was resizing the die, because again, my process uh, for these is I'm using a body die first, and then I'm using the bushing die to resize the necks. Uh, and then with the mandrel dies, or I'm sorry, with the mandrel, I'm then I'm using a mandrel to open up the necks, as opposed to the expander ball where I'm just using the expander ball. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so those are the numbers uh, for the average bullet run out after seeding the bullet. Uh, it is anywhere from one thousandths to four thousandths. I did not see any aggregate uh, run out, meaning um, like, uh, see how this one had like four thousandths when I measured it. Um, and it ended up being the run out was about four thousandths when measured off of the ogive of the bullet. So it oftentimes you will see with bullet run out, sometimes it can be upwards of say eight thousandths, which means that the run out of the bullet or the concentricity might actually be the more proper term, uh, is um, four thousandths. Sometimes you got to pay attention to that stuff. Uh, I did not, as a general rule, notice also that uh, seeding the bullets um, helped, quote unquote, with uh, the case neck run out. I didn't measure the whole lot. I just kind of went down. And in general, I saw that the numbers were uh, pretty much the same. Uh, if there was a change, it wasn't appreciably so. Uh, not that I worry too much about runout. When we get to the 4,000s, I mean, there's something notable here, but whatever. We're going to shoot them. We're going to see how things do. Um, what else? Ah, I know what I'm almost missing. The reason why these are separate. Okay, so in general, these actually seeded fairly well. They're very uniform in terms of their uh, cartridge base to ogive. And I can't remember the exact number. I want uh, It ends with 61, though. These ones that are separated came out longer. Uh, and when you measure them and also look at them, you'll see that there's a little mark near the tip. They are longer. Uh, the bullets themselves are longer, and there's something more narrow about the ogive that... It was indexing, I'm going to go ahead and use that word, indexing off of like the inner part of the cone or the upper part of the cone of the um, uh, the bullet seating plug. So they did not seat as deep. I did not uh, go to try to keep them at the same OGI measurements as the rest, cartridge-based OGI I meant to say, for overall length. I just butchered that, but you get what I'm saying. Uh... I'm going to leave them as is. I'm keeping them separated because I want to see what effect that has, that run-out problem, that's not a run-out problem, has on shooting flyers. That said, enough talking, let's get to shooting. Mandrel, spander ball, these are none of the ones that have the uh, seating issue problems. So, yeah, be interesting to see how things shape up from here. Okay, now that I'm all set up. Oop. Had to do this all one-handed. That's what she said, right? Anyway, 
So let me collect my thoughts for a quick moment because this is part three. Part three of Expander Ball versus Mandrel. Okay, so brief recap. Uh, all of these rounds have been resized uh, with a 2,000th uh, shoulder bump with a Redding body size die. The ones on the bottom here, I used my new Redding bushing neck sizer to resize the necks, and then I used a Lyman M die, which is basically a type of mandrel, to expand the necks back out. And there's approximately two thousandths, quote unquote, of neck tension there. In other words, uh, after expanding it, the diameter of the neck case, case neck, blah, blah, uh, is 309. Uh, the bullets are 311, so you do the math. Pretty much the same thing up here, with the exception of these were sized with an RCBS neck sizing die with a standard expander ball. Uh, I'll tell you straight up, these did give me better uh, runout numbers, but we're for part three, we're ignoring that. Uh, part one and two, uh, we found that the mandrel and the groups were awful because these bullets are awful, but the mandrel did consistently better with both of them. Uh, so this is part three, where basically I'm going to try a different neck sizing die to see if we come up with the same results or not. Uh, meaning, does the mandrel still win because it has the consistency of the neck tension? Not just simply that it, they're both sized to 309, but there's something about the uniformity of a mandrel that helps you shoot smaller groups. So that's, that's, <laughs> that's basically it. I suppose I could have just said that. We're going to see if mandrels are better. Uh, however, this has been a process, and this is really just me muddling through the whole process because uh, I just have these, uh, I bought like 200 of these supposed match PPU bullets, and turns out they're not very match. <laughs> I mean, not really too surprising. They probably were great, um, you know, 50 years ago when... Pretty much everyone, for any sort of consistency, was expected to sort bullets. These days, uh, manufacturing processes have been far better, and sorting is something you do um, if you're doing something, I don't want to say extreme, but something on the fringe where uh, it's a little bit above and beyond your average shooter. I'm babbling at this point. Why aren't we shooting groups? Let's shoot groups. Oh yeah, because um, I need to get into the habit of including it more in my videos. Uh, so no backrest, just front rest. We're shooting at, uh, 50 yards there, 50 yards. And, um, I'm going to be doing round robin, uh, actually not round robin. Um, I'm going to be firing one, then one, then one, then one. Uh, the barrel has not been cleaned. Uh, I think I got about 200 shots through it now. So things should be fine. And I'm going to be shooting in strings of five. So one, two, three, four, five, let it rest, cool off. And uh, we'll see how things go. Things have been fairly consistent up to this point. So if I see any changes today, I will be genuinely surprised. Just fired the last shot. And I really want to give credit to uh, 4166 for just being a super clean burning powder. But also, uh, here's another thing to note. See the little donut that's starting to form? This is just like, what, the third... Third case forming, not case forming, third firing using this die. So, I mean, donuts are going to happen pretty much no matter what, but when you use a bushing, it definitely becomes more pronounced. It's not quite as much there with the RCBS dies. Yeah, it's not as prominent, is it? However, um, it should be noted that when the bullets are uh, seated, where the very bottom is, where they uh, index with the case mouth, contact with the case mouth, uh, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the case neck, so uh, that's that's not going to be affecting our neck tension at all. Well, it's not going to be directly affecting our neck neck tension at all, I should say. Anyway, let's uh, let me crunch through the snow here. Let's go take a look at uh, what we got for groups. Okay, so before we get to our before we jump into our group interpretation, I want to talk about two caveats. Uh, one, when I was firing this group. I have a called shot. Like, the Mirage got the best of me. I saw right as I squeezed the trigger that my front post was higher than what I intended it to be. And, um, 
pretty confident that shot is it. That leads beautifully into my second caveat, which is for each group I'm allowing two flyers. But this is where we jump into the group interpretation, and this is where I feel slightly vindicated, especially with talking about how garbage these bullets are. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, you notice it's a little bit bigger. Ten. They overlap. So, like, if I take away two flyers, what do I do? Like, originally I was going to take away that one and this one, and that looks like a, I mean, for this bullet, it looks like an acceptable group, but do I just take away that one? Yeah, it's a little bit better, but that's still over three inches, which is worse than what we did before, still. Uh, regardless, though, similar point of Im impact as before, similar group as before. Um, let's just move on. Let's talk about uh, the Mandrel, because again, this is the RCBS neck sizer. Let's talk about how the Mandrel did. And just straight up, just initial off-the-cuff glance interpretation. This looks like a better group. And you know what? Um, comparing the extremes, it is. Uh, however, kind of ballparking it, it's not too much better. That's still about three inches. However, let's take away two flyers. Um, let's say it's these two. Wow, that looks definitely a lot better. It's still a little bit under three inches, but it's a much tighter group than than uh, the other one. If we take away these two, like most horizontal, I guess I'll go ahead and say. I mean, it does tighten it up a little bit, maybe two and a half inches. I'll move the camera down so you guys can see better. But either way, like, um, it's yet a third case where even with using a different neck sizer with an expander ball that has does have a different design, uh, the mandrel is winning out, and presumably because it has more consistent neck tension. So what I have to do from here is I think... I mean, I would like to get a better bullet. However, three or three British bullets are 311 bullets, I should say. 311 caliber bullets are getting, they are sparse. I see that Spear is starting to put out, um, you can find their uh, hot cores out, their hunting line, both 150 and 180. Uh, however, um, those, like, I would like to get, like, some Sierra Match Kings. That'd be ideal. I don't think Burger makes. Uh, <laughs> any bullets for 311 it'd be awesome if they did but they don't so i think i'm just gonna have to switch to my semi-custom 7x57 rifle and kind of continue this testing to round this out because there's going to be no harm in doing that in fact it's going to be overall very beneficial to test different calibers and different rifles uh, that's part of the reason why i started with the military surplus is because i want to see if something that could be considered entry level would have an effect, and it does, and we've displayed consistently so. Um, the one other thing I can do to try to test this would be, um, I do have the Lee um, neck sizing mandrel, I do have that, uh, the call it neck sizer, there we go, that's the proper name. However, that does have a different neck tension, it's uh, 1000s instead of 2000s. I'm cold, let's get back to the bench. Okay, let's put on some gloves here so we don't somehow disturb our results. So what I plan on doing in this video is uh, these bullets, I have these PPU 170 grain bullets. These are originally made from Maz and Nagant, but I mean, 303 British is the same caliber. I plan on using them. We're going to put their bullets to the test to see how much they consider match, match bullets. So we're going to measure them in three ways. Uh, weight, overall length, and then the bullet base to the ogive. And you can see here I have my little comparator tool there. And I don't need tweezers anymore. I'll put on gloves. So uh, let's see here. We grab 10 bullets. Let's have at her. So 170.1. Now keep in mind this Lyman scale, it's um, usually within a tenth of a grain accuracy. And reading heavy like this, or light uh, isn't unheard of uh, but what we're aiming for as long as it's within three tenths uh, that's okay and there I already spoke I shouldn't say I spoke too soon but yeah so that is 
six thousandths, I'm sorry, six tenths of a grain light. So, sure, yeah, we'll place it off to the side. And this one is just slightly more heavy. Definitely heavier. Let's tear it out. Because with these scales, it's actually a good idea to tear after every time, just for funsies. Let's re measure this one. Same measurement, 169.4. Tear. 170.2. And 70. And 170.1. So that's not bad. Uh, we're definitely going to take a look at that one outlier. 170.5. I think I forgot to tear it. 170.5.4.5 again. So that's another outlier. Isn't that enough to cause that 10th shot flyer in my previous video? I don't know. But next step, we're going to measure the base, bullet base to ogive. Here we go. So what do we see there? It's a uh, 1.605. So 1.605, remember that. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, look at this. 1.613, uh, a little bit over. So I'm going to place that one over there. Let's see what the other ones come up with. 1.603. That's... These are not making a good name for themselves right now. And there we go. Uh, 1.612. Oh, my glove got cut, stuck. 1.604. 1.603. One point six oh five, one point six oh three, one point six oh three, and then let's take a look at this lightest one. I can't remember if we looked at it or not. That one's one point six oh three. So even though this one was definitely lighter than the rest by about six tenths, it's still the same measurement. But these two. Or these the that one weighs the same. So even though these ones are closer in weight, uh, their their measurements, how they were made, is definitely different. Come on, let's measure them again. Yeah. So I didn't bugger that up. Yeah, six twelve. So that actually is that could be. Well, first off, now we know why we did a three inch group at like 50 yards, right? Now we got to do overall length. So give me one second while I take this part off. And let's do these ones that were a little bit longer in terms of the O jive. Okay, so that's uh, 1.218. We'll just say, yeah, 218. A little bit above actually. To fourteen. To seventeen. To fifteen. To twenty. To fifteen. To eighteen. To eleven, roughly. 215, 213. So that's like a spread of like nine thousandths. But what really worries me is that difference in ogive. Although maybe I shouldn't, but still, um, those are just the measurements I took. Um, I could technically, I could technically measure the runout of the bullets with my case master. Um, 
we could just put these blo two blocks together and measure it out, but um, is it worth it? <sighs> Fine, let's do it, let's do it. Even though my case master is a little bit dirty. Let's see how well this works. This is kind of an absurd idea. This is part of the reason why it probably won't work. I need to find a better way to So this is a little bit of a stupid idea, and we'll take it slow, and hopefully I'm not moving, yeah, see, like that's bumping the bullet a little bit. So we have to take this with a grain of salt. I know some of that is me moving the bullet. And even though for some of the full rotation, I'm seeing the needle move about one thousandths, I know it's not one thousandths. Because some of that is just me moving the bullet itself. But you can say about a half thousandths, which is, um, I'm, I guess you'd say five ten thousandths, which is... Um, it's not a great amount. How's that? <laughs> okay, get that settled in there. Oh, yeah, look at this one. It's measuring. It's already like a thousandths over. It's saying, um, yeah, take this with a grain of salt. Don't. Like, I would need. A, I would need a far better way of manipulating the bullet to get a more even more smooth way of interacting with this dial. So don't, I'm going to stop there. Take that with a grain of salt. But I think that we can say that the run out of the jacket, uh, I'm sorry, the run out of the bullet is not as good as say something else. In fact, I wonder, I wonder, uh, let me grab, let me grab a burger bullet. Okay, here we go. I grabbed, uh, it's 7 millimeter actually, um, and this is just a uh, Burger's VLD tar er, hunting bullets. So, something you don't consider a, a match or whatever. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, this is definitely not going to be good. Try to turn it a little bit more. So, was it situated on the 5.4? Yeah, and you can see it's moving slightly from me rotating it like just there but holy crap like as I turn it I barely see the needle move like basically the movement of the needle is practically me bumping it because um this part here as I'm trying to <laughs> Like, I have a very narrow way where I can gain purchase on turning the bullet. And then sometimes I accidentally push the bullet forward. Or sometimes I'll actually tap that there. But, yeah, this is... <laughs> My technique needs working. But you can already see the difference between a burger bullet and one of these uh, PPU bullets. They definitely have run out. So that's why part of the reason why I do all this this crazy stuff. Actually, just for funsies. So, oh, whoop. I didn't mean to turn that off. I meant to tear it. Uh, so this should be 140 grains. 140. There you go. Okay, so these are not great bullets. Yes, we can say that that flyer was probably caused by one of these bullets, but let's load them up. We'll check run out again. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video out of that part, but uh, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And then um, I'll probably go out to the range and I'll see you guys there.